Hi, and welcome to another week of At Home um, Science with Leela. Um, that's me, <laughs> and we're coming from the Fairbanks Museum and Planetarium, but obviously uh, talking to you from home and um, just looking at some things that I got to see this week that I was really excited about. So I wanted to share those first and then think about uh, some activities related to uh, something that's happening this week, which is Earth Day, uh, this coming Wednesday. So I want to share out some activities that we could potentially do on um, this week or definitely on Wednesday. So let me go ahead and show you the first thing that I got to see this week. It was a um, pilated woodpecker hole. So this was sort of brand new, very fresh hole. You can see here the pine sap is actually running. Here's another hole. Uh, down below you can see all of sort of the, the sawdust or the pieces of the tree that were removed. Um, this could be a nesting cavity. It's quite large, so it might be a place where they would raise their young. Um, but again, this is, you know smaller hole, this might be evidence of that woodpecker looking for, remember we've been talking about all those insects, uh, that might be a chance that that woodpecker is looking for that food or those insects, maybe an adult or even a larva or um, you know some eggs, various different things that might be just underneath the bark there of that tree. And uh, especially like larva and adults, they can hear them moving around um, and that attracts them to that tree and that's where they begin that um, sort of pecking process to get their food and or to build a nest. Uh, the next thing I saw this week that I really thought was kind of neat was just how nature is the ultimate recycler. If you notice, this sort of gray birch tree is growing on what was the stump of a rather large tree that obviously has begun to rot away moss and leaf litter, everything is on it. Um, and it's sort of fascinating. This tree's seed landed here, started, sprouted and started to grow. And then look at these roots reaching way down uh, the outside of this um, stump here. And at some point when this stump finally sort of rots away or completely decomposes and is completely reused and recycled by uh, the nature around it, this tree is gonna have these very funny long roots underneath it um, and, and potentially like a space or air, uh, so it's going to look like it's standing on legs. So sometimes you see that in the woods. This is sort of what is happening and why you might be seeing that. Um, next thing that I saw this week, which obviously uh, we're all probably on high alert <laughs> thinking about, um, is certainly in the last few weeks, ticks have come out. Um, when we have been talking about insects, I just want to point out Insects only have those six legs, and they have the three body parts, which is the head, thorax, and abdomen. Uh, but here, what we're looking at is something with eight legs, and just a head, or a cephalothorax, as it's called, and a very large abdomen. So our tick is uh, much more closely related to a spider. Um, so it's an arachnid, or in the arachnid family. Um, and it's watching it move. This is just a short video. This is one that I actually found on myself. I could feel it. I was e it was easy to grab and actually put on this graphing paper, which is very small squares, by the way. Um, but just to give you an example of how they move and how quickly they move, um, here's our tick, and you can see it's constantly reaching out, constantly sort of feeling the world around it for for what's out there. Um, and again. This is something that we have to deal with this time of year. Um, I'll play it one more time just so you can really see that movement. Um, but it's something that we should be aware of. And if you're aware of them and you look for them, again, you know, always checking behind your ears and sort of your neck, your waist, um, sock line, places like that. They're easy to, to grab and, and you know, if, especially if they haven't um, taken hold, which takes, a, they have to be on you for quite a while to actually really burrow in. So um, they're easy to grab and pull off just like this one that I found on me and um, was able to take an image of it uh, very easily. So let me go to our next thing. So um, got to see a nice tom turkey, a male turkey crossing um, the field today, which was really exciting. So I know there's been lots of them, lots of them flying up into the trees as they go for walks, but it was just kind of fun 
to get to see one uh, right out on, on my walk. Here's another thing I saw on my walk, which I was really excited about. This is a, a daffodil, and I thought it was really neat how you know, it grew through, right through the leaves. You can see it's, it's just poking right up through the ground, and the, this leaf is actually attached or it grew right through that leaf. But this, I'm hoping within a week, I'll have this lovely bloom, a lovely daffodil right there. Uh, so another exciting thing that I got to see on my walk um, outside this uh, weekend. Um, here was another thing I came across, um, and I just thought it, it sounded so lovely. So let me turn up the um, speakers a little bit. But it was just kind of nice to find this, this rushing little um, sort of waterfall, you know, just a gentle brook here, but it was, it was um, just nearby to the house and it was kind of fun on my walk. And what I did here is I, I did a slow motion, so you're gonna see a leaf over time come through, but looking at how clean this water is, and thinking, well, there's all this leaf litter and all this gunk, but those leaves and those tree roots and the moss and everything that this water is flowing over is actually cleaning that water. Um, so it's very important as you're watching this to realize, look how clean that water is. And again, it's going through all that leaf litter and that leaf litter is helping clean, basically take any kind of dirt or anything that, um, that we may have seen during rainstorms, rocks, things like that and it, it's filtering it out. Um, there goes that leaf right over, but just really amazingly clean water. Um, and just sort of a beautiful sight. All right, and then let's go to our next. Um, and again, wanted to take pictures of these trees because unlike the first tree that I showed you, that sort of gray birch that was on top of a, um, old stump of another tree. Look at these, these are cedars and they are growing on top of, of these rocks that is along sort of this little tiny stream. And so if those rocks, let's say, get, get washed away, again, these trees are gonna have these funny, almost like legs, spindly legs that they're standing on uh, to support their weight. But in general, this is again a tree that found a place in the moss right on a rock and was able to start growing. Uh, right there. So I just think that's, an, again, one of those neat things you can see out in nature and, and sort of understand the mystery of like why do certain roots look spindly and long and what was there before that gave it support. Uh, and then the last thing I saw on my walk um, today was this really cool. These are called trout lily. And so they have this kind of neat spotted look to them. Um, and this is gonna be a really beautiful little flower that's gonna come up soon. We've already looked at colt's foot that's been coming up along the sides of driveways. That's that really yellow dandelion looking flower with no greenery around it. And this, this is actually, you know, the greenery coming up first. And then the, um, Trout lily, the flower itself, is going to pop up in a few weeks, so hopefully we'll have some images of that um, to share soon. All right, so uh, now I just want to talk about Earth Day that, again, is coming up this Wednesday. This is a 50-year celebration. Um, it's someone, a senator in Wisconsin in 1970, saw an oil spill happen out in Santa Barbara, California, and they felt it was really important to set aside a day where we educate people about how to um, make a difference and protect our planet. Um, so it's, it's really a day for you guys to get outside and enjoy nature, but maybe do um, make a commitment to do something that's nice for the environment. Uh, so I came up with some, some activities or some ideas. Um, and the first one is, you know, you know, maybe it's a rainy day and you're not going to go outside, but uh, find an animal or think about an animal maybe you've seen outside or an animal that you've always wanted to learn about and learn everything you can, maybe some fun, weird facts about it, and then really study it, look at it in a book or online, and try to draw it. And so the, the more you observe it, the more you're going to add detail to your drawing. So that's, that's one way that you could um, do something where you're learning a little bit more about some of the life, other life on this planet. Um, th but the going on a nature walk is a big one. Getting outside maybe learning, doing some tree identification. Uh, if you look at one of Bobby's videos, it's all about looking at the buds on trees and, and understanding which tree is which. 
and that's a great way of getting to learn your trees before they leaf out. Um, another thing is to bring a little plastic bag with you and collect up trash or things that you find along on your walk. Uh, because again, you, that, this is a way of, of cleaning up or leaving the nature, the walk that you're on cleaner than you found it. So that's again, making that commitment to protect the planet. Um, another one is to, to think about recycling some of the things that you have at home. So um, I think of going into my recycling and, and I, I got a jar out and I filled it with some soil and put a seed in it. And so here is my, um, it'll be a snap pea plant um, or snap peas once it becomes an adult. Uh, and it's something that I could put outside, granted, It'll need more room than this, but it was a great way to start it. Uh, so it was a nice opportunity to start it, and it just, it's done really well. Uh, so again, using glass jars, another thing that you could use is our plastic containers. I really like these, these bigger containers. I, again, fill them with dirt. And this one, um, talk about really recycling, I found a potato <laughs> that had been left to its lonesome in my fridge and it had started growing what we call an eye, sort of, there was a dark spot that actually, um, little white fuzz, something was, was starting to grow out of it. And generally when potatoes have that, you do not want to eat them. That's at that point, um, there, there's, becoming a bit poisonous actually for you to eat regularly when they're first out of the ground or um, haven't been exposed to sunlight they're totally fine but this one had been around for long enough that it had started to grow what we call this eye and so when I planted it I don't know if you can see but it actually started to sprout um, in, in two different places so I took the potato cut it in half put it in dirt and the other one in the other um, container and started to grow them. And eventually I will move this just like my pea plant outside, but this is a great start starting container for it. And again, just some recycling, something that you can find, um, <clears throat> you know, in, in sort of your daily use of plastics and, and glass. Um, and then some of the things like I found a potato that I planted. Um, it turns out that there's certain things that might sprout in your fridge uh, if you leave them long enough like I do. So <laughs> um, so some of, you know here's our typical onion. This would actually be where the sprouts or the green top would come out. This would be underground and then this is where the roots would be. And so of course we love to eat sort of this um, this base part where all the sugars and everything are stored, sort of all the energy to grow another onion. But <laughs> if you go long enough you can actually, uh, you know, if this begins to sprout, you can actually stick the whole thing into some dirt and you'll see um, root system grow and um, the tops grow out and you'll be able to later on collect up more onions from this one onion. So again, something that's gone past, maybe you're not able to eat it or feel uncomfortable eating it, you can still do more with it. Um, so again, here's another one. Uh, garlic is a great one. Again, you can sort of see where the, the root system would be and where the tops would be. So this would be below ground and they snip them. Usually they're kind of very long tops. Um, but what I've been told about this to do is you would actually take just one clove, leave as much of the paper or the outside on it um, and plant it with the pointy top facing up in about, you know, um, three to four inches of soil, and you will get a new garlic head or new garlic plant from your single clove. Another one you can do is, is the shallot. All of these are in the uh, alum family, which is the onion family. So these are all sort of related. And um, you can see again, the root system and where the sprouts would come up. And so just ways of if, if food has gone by, you can still have a chance to plant it and see what happens. Um, now you might ask, what if I have an old apple or what if I find a lemon and I just stick those in the ground and see what happens? Absolutely, try it out, um, you know, maybe do a little research, but you can absolutely just experiment, just see what will happen if you plant these in the ground. And granted, you might know when you, um, an apple, comes off a tree, so it's not like some of these that are really, would be down in the, the dirt in the ground, underground. This is, you know, above ground and on a tree, so it's got 
a stem, you're gonna eat the fruit, and inside though are those seeds that you then could plant. So you could plant the whole thing, but you may wanna eat it first <laughs> and then take what is left over and plant that. Um, and again, same with this, you may want the juice of your, your lemon or your citrus, maybe your orange, but there's seeds in there that you could try planting if you want and see what happens. All right, so we've looked at some things that we could recycle just in our kitchen <laughs> and have some new food from it. Um, and some other things that you could potentially plant are, um, you know, plant a tree. A tree is a great way of taking that carbon dioxide that we're releasing into the atmosphere and trapping it in a tree. The tree is using that carbon dioxide is a building block. So planting a tree is a great way of helping the planet out um, for years to come. Um, and then just a few other things to think about. Uh, it, let's say you're not going outside, you wanna stay inside, it is a whole rainy week, so you're, but there's, but you wanna, there's something that you wanna do. You wanna try to help the environment or help the planet um, and be committed in that way you can turn off the water when you're brushing your teeth. Think about it, if you're supposed to brush your teeth for two minutes, turning off the water in that time saves gallons of water from just being wasted. So that's one thing. And another thing I always think of is to turn off the lights uh, in the room if you're no longer in there. When you leave, turn them off. If there's other devices that maybe your phone is fully charged, you could unplug it um, and unplug it from the wall so that it's not trickling or you know using just a little bit of energy. Anywhere you have a plug-in with things not turned on, there's actually just a little bit of a loss of electricity because it's allowing that to be like that light to be turned on right away or the TV to be turned on right away. So if you're not using something for a while, it's fine to um, unplug it. And that's again another way of saving uh, the use of electricity or you know some electricity is um, made by burning coal so there's there's various different ways of of less use of electricity is less use of resources and easier on the planet um, and then the last one i think of is um, and granted this needs to be a sunny day but getting outside and hanging your clothes out. Um, you know, it's, it's awesome just to sit outside and, and get a little sunlight for yourself. Vitamin D is very good for your, your skin and for your um, immune system and body in general. Um, but, you know, getting a little sun on your clothes to dry them versus putting them in a dryer and using more electricity in your house, again, is a great way to save energy and um, expense and all of that um, in using electricity, which again impacts um, the earth. And so these are all just little ways that you can do things on Earth Day to make a difference and um, help not only yourself out, but the planet as a whole. Uh, so hopefully those are a couple of little ideas for you guys um, to follow through on. I'll put them in a resource document that'll be with the video. Um, and just get outside and enjoy it, especially as these days get a little bit warmer. Uh, it's just nice to sit out in the sun and enjoy it, especially right now while you have time. So go out and really look at nature, really enjoy going for a walk, take a pet out. That's a great way of getting yourself outside. Um, and again, we'll see you next week and we'll talk more about native bee homes and how to make them uh, just using paper or various different um, natural items that you can find. So thanks again, and I'll see you next week. Take care.